On November 14th and 15th, 2009, Underscore Records Private Limited organized a two-day conference entitled Pro Music, Pro Musicians, a conference on intellectual property rights for Indian musicians at Nehru Center, Mumbai. The purpose of the conference was to bring musicians, instrument makers, record labels, archivists, event and artist managers, concert organizers, and music students onto a single platform to critically discuss issues related to intellectual property and the Indian music industry. The two-day symposium received generous support from the Ford Foundation. Justice B. N. Sri Krishna, former Supreme Court judge, inaugurated the conference. Held in high esteem by that civilization. Externally, culture manifests itself in literature, music, performing at visual arts, manner of speech, dress, comportment, and in a myriad, myriad other ways. A famous that come to my office. The first session was on copyright, or the exclusive legal rights given to any originator or an assignee to exploit a literary, musical, or artistic work in any medium, including print, audio, and or visual. The panelists, Professor T. N. Daruwala, Lawrence Liang, and G. R. Raghavender, addressed questions ranging from what legally constitutes copyright to the specific steps required in obtaining one. Why this registration is necessary? There are 184 countries in the Bible. India is one of the few countries, about 18 to 20 countries, introduced this registration. So what is the need for that? It gives a prima facie evidence. When the second session took up the case of performers' rights, as led by speakers Professor T. M. Daruwala, Amit Datta, and G. R. Raghavender. Discussions focused on the broadcast of live performances, the illegal recording and reproduction of concerts, and the active steps that musicians can take in order to protect themselves and their live performances from being misused. The presence of several well-known solo and accompanying artists was especially crucial in keeping the discussions of performers' rights within the context of Indian music, since convention often relegates accompanying artists to a secondary status and jeopardizes their rights. The final session for the first day brought to the limelight the often debated position of traditional knowledge in public consumption. G. R. Agavinder gave an overview of the national and international regulations for protecting traditional knowledge and what falls within that corpus in the Indian subcontinent. Dr. Ashok Ranade and Lawrence Liang also shared their insights on the subject. And making money. So how uh, any royalties are being paid to those uh, that community? No. So this is a kind of exploitation and misappropriation is going on, and then uh, the community is lo losing the uh, their field or the same field. And I am the person. Who the fourth session, beginning on the second day of the conference, was dedicated to how instrument makers can patent their work. Patents refer to the exclusive rights granted by the government to an inventor for publicly disclosing an invention. As a case study, a short film explained how musician Ulhas Bapat had successfully patented his modification to the kalams, or mallets, of the santur. The panelists included Professor T. N. Daruwala and Amit Datta, who enlightened the participants about the difference between patents, trademarks, and copyright. What means you trademark rights is one, the strength of the trademark. What is the trademark? What is it being applied in relation to? Is it descriptive to the character or quality of those services or goods? Then it's not protectable uh, at first flush. And third and most important, if the opposing party or the opposing user is using, is, it, is he subordinate? Is his user after yours? I want to float an idea. The realities of file sharing, illegal downloading, and the general ease with which music is illegally circulated was the subject of the fifth session. The ways in which the digital era and the internet age are both enabling and disabling to musicians and listeners were debated by Darius Talal, Lawrence Liang, G. R. Raghavinder, and Vishal Dadlani. But when an artist sells you a painting, he may have sold it to you at a time when he was, for example, a struggling artist, for example, 
when Dyer Mehta sold for four crores, he went on record complaining that, listen, my painting got sold for four crores, what did I get? Now, and he complained about the fact that we didn't have a provision in the Indian law which would allow him a percentage in the resale. Now, he was wrong about that because it is there in, in, in the law. So what it says is that you are entitled to 10% of every resale that... The sixth session brought into focus the role of music archives as discussed through the perspectives and experiences of Dr. Shubha Choudhury and Praful Anubay. A large portion of the discussion centered on the particular principles that guide an archives acquisition, cataloging, preserving, and dissemination practices, and the kinds of relationships that currently exist and are possible between storehouses and musicians, collectors, scholars, and any other individuals wanting access to recorded materials. As both a scholar musician and key figure in guiding certain archives in India, Dr. Ashok Ranade also contributed his views on the ethical aspects of archiving, especially the relationship between artists, collectors who deposit into archives, and the management entrusted with such materials. Legal issues related to the migration of archival material from one format to another were also discussed, and a consensus was reached that proper legislation pertaining to archiving was required. Jia Raghavender and Amit Datta also added expert comments. You need a technical person, you need somebody who's going to do your cataloging, so you might want to have a background in maybe library or information sciences, you might need somebody with a background in computers, and so on and so forth. So, copyright and a particular work. The final panel consisted of Darius Dalal and Lawrence Liang, who addressed the nuances of making and signing contracts in the music business. Contracts for performances, management, publishing, and recording were some of the major types of contracts that were discussed from the viewpoint of musicians, event organizers, and record companies. Many of the performers asked questions related to their own experiences. The legal experts insisted on the necessity of written contracts for all live performances and recordings. Well, the Act provides that if these requirements are not included in the contract, then it stipulates that the territory will be the territory of India if there is no term of the contract and be for a period of five years. And the Act even goes so far to say that if the assignee does not exercise his right within one year in respect of that word, it will lapse.